messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There are so many people tonight I may not want to necessarily interrupt the flow of what God is doing. We'll find some time in the course of the service to just take our time and really, really honor and appreciate everyone. There are people who have traveled from everywhere within and outside this nation and we honor all the men and women of God. I have my dear friends and the ministers of God seated here in front. We'll take our time to really, really celebrate everyone later on. But I want us to just focus on the word and let's trust the Lord to help us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Second Peter chapter 1. We began to deal with this. Second Peter chapter 1. We're reading the first three verses just to establish something for our faith to rest upon. And then we trust God. And whilst we're doing that, please may I request that the communion be set so that we would make it really really very fast we'll start from verse 2 verse 2 and 3 it says grace and peace please look up if you don't have a bible be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of god and of jesus our lord verse 3 according as his divine power stop and let me just buttress on this for the sake of those who are just joining us today we establish the fact that every possibility in the kingdom comes from his divine power that means the active agency that is responsible for results in this kingdom it is not his word it is not faith it is his divine power please understand faith and the word are instruments that convey his divine power that the ingredient the force behind the performance of God is his divine power the Bible says his divine power hath given unto us all things that means there is nothing that is outside of the jurisdiction of his divine power to provide are we together so if you are healed the agency that brought that healing is his divine power if you are lifted tonight like you will be it comes from his divine power if god opens a door if he smashes obstacles no matter what it is whatever happens in your life that can only be done by god was sponsored by his divine power are we together now so we're establishing this please get the teaching yesterday the dynamics of the anointing please please get it it is very important that your understanding about how the power of god works is straightened and accurate I shared something yesterday I might repeat a little bit of it this morning or this evening really but then the goal is to get us to solidify our understanding it's a very simple principle but if you do not have it you may never see the power of God at work are we together now yes so his divine power hath given us all lifting all healing all speed all restoration are we together now all energizings all deliverances his divine power because for many years you see from preachers to members to elders in the faith we have not exactly understood the dynamics how the word of god how faith and how the anointing synergizes themselves together to produce a performance in believers so we have those who believe in what they may call the word we have those who believe in what you may call faith we have those who believe in what you call the power of god and none of them is wrong because the results show they must be doing something right are we together now yes the divine power of god is the central working force that bets his ability in the life of people and over their situations the word of god listen like i taught you faith you know comes from the word of god your conviction of it are we together now faith is derived from the word of god that means that god has made several propositions in scripture according to his integrity is a manifesto of what he is able to do 
we together now so he's proposing to the saints that for trusting me these are the possibilities that can accrue to your life so it's up to you by the ministry of the holy spirit to come to a point of conviction are we together now when you come to that point of conviction then you are mandated to demonstrate your conviction through an action of obedience the name given to both the conviction and the action you take is faith if you are convicted and do not act in compliance with the condition that makes for that result you have believed but you are not in faith is it simple enough are we together now that means that faith is not only resident within the heart it starts with the heart but there must be a step that is taken to honor your conviction understanding has come to you when you know your role in the equation of your results if you do not know the role you have to play in the equation of your result you do not understand it this is very important but the word of god please listen is the agency by which faith is built it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god it doesn't necessarily mean just hearing a voice that means that there is a system of interaction with your spirit man when you are exposed to whether the written word or the spoken word if it's the word that comes from god it sustains an ability to rest upon your spirit full of god's convictions the bible is full of his propositions this is what i can do and then you prove it by saying lord i trust you so the word of god itself i'm careful to say this now because i don't want it to make to sound like the word of god is not powerful it is powerful but it is powerful because it is the career and the container of his power are we together now the anointing follows the word of god wherever the word of god goes that's where the anointing goes so if the word of god goes in the direction of healing his power goes in the direction of healing if the word of god goes in the direction of lifting his power goes in the direction of lifting but i said something yesterday that i will establish quickly for the purpose of the impartation that would happen later that our limitations or the inability to see the fullness of god's power is caused by two factors yesterday i attempted to establish that number one the nature of the operation of the anointing is that just because you are anointed does not mean everything can be done the anointing works like money are we together now that every level and every dimension has a spiritual price tag the possibilities that can be purchased at that level if you have 10,000 naira there are certain things you can obtain with that amount are we together now you cannot obtain anything higher than 10,000 so I gave an example yesterday come doctor I gave an example yesterday that if I am a man of God and I have let me use for the purpose of example say 100,000 naira worth of anointing watch this I hope you understand why my, my example when this gentleman comes to receive from me under god god is limitless his power is limitless the holy spirit is unlimited are we together now but remember the possibilities are according to the power that works not lives in me are we together now then when i pray for this brother father bless him father lift him the level of grace that i have are we together now will scan through this man's life and only solve the problems that are within the grace oh dear i'm just spotting him please let's honor the pastor of second equa here may the lord honor you sir i cannot but honor you thank you surprise surprise thank you god bless you so much sir hallelujah are we together so this man has he's in need of restoration watch this now he's in need of speed he's in need of lifting he's in need of deliverance he's in need of healing he's in need of impartation of a supernatural grace say the gift of the spirit 
it is only the problem that is within the level of the anointing i have that will be solved he may fall down he may roll under the anointing he will get up with some cases solved and others not solved this is the reason why being anointed once is not enough you must strive to grow in glory because you get to a point where every challenge that is brought is within the level of your grace that's when you become a blessing so the bible says it this way how god anointed jesus you see that now the secret of his going around doing good was not just that he was anointed look at the extent to which he was anointed When you read Isaiah chapter 47, it begins to show us the dimensions or the progressions of the anointing in the life of a person and the possibilities that can happen at every level. Ezekiel the prophet was in a vision and he began to see a river that flowed from the east side of the temple and then it was to his ankle, then it was to his knee, it was to his loins and then it was a river. That he could not flow through it and the bible says whatever contacted that river at that level every fish that was dead came alive there are certain conditions and levels of the anointing where certain results are activated all results are not activated at every level if you're with me say amen, amen. this is the reason why the apostles will minister and sometimes they will honestly admit that this level of grace is not at work in their life and they will go and outsource for other dimensions of the spirit to continue from where they've stopped are we together i believe and i am convinced that the sons of skiva had succeeded in some level of deliverance at one point or the other i do not want to believe that was their first trial the level of confidence reveals that they must have gotten some results so they said we adjure you by jesus whom paul preaches and hear the response of the demon jesus i know you see in other words the demon is saying i know who i am i'm not stupid i know the level of grace that can get me out here i know that jesus has it i know that paul has it but i don't know where you are standing and you see this is it so if you can if you can't pray for me and get me free then i will pounce on you you see it now it's a it's a big risk to be anointed at a very low level because you will not see the need to press for more of god and then you will believe that just because the anointing is there just like money just because you touch the back of your pocket and there's something there does not mean you have what it takes to purchase the things that you want so this is what we identified as the number one reason why we may not be able to obtain certain results and you know the level of grace and anointing at work in your life by the testimonies that recycle around your life and ministry the testimonies that recycle around your life are a testament they are proof that this is what the grace you have can produce are we together number two we discussed yesterday if you remember very carefully that the second um revelation that we must understand on the dynamics of the anointing is that your understanding is what structures the efficiency of the anointing listen carefully that means that it is not enough to be anointed the dimensions and the possibilities that the anointing produce is where your understanding takes it to i gave you an example yesterday that the anointing is likened to a reservoir of water are we together and your understanding is like the host wherever you channel the water to it will go the pressure and its ability to give life is not in doubt but the various areas that will partake of that water is governed by this host call your understanding that means listen that means that if all i know is the dimension of god that heals every time i pray for someone the only dimension they will see in their life is healing my understanding will continue to push the anointing to manifest as the healing power of god so if the person is looking for prosperity for instance i will pray for the person but you will find out that he will be healed 
but not prosper and the reason is because the moment i sustain an understanding of the economic system of god then the power of god can follow that new pathway to heal his finances are you getting what i'm saying now yes so if i do not understand the principles that make for restoration after a delay i can come and say in the name of jesus be restored no the anointing will want to follow the path of restoration but understanding has not opened the channel so the anointing is limited and it will be forced to follow the path that is currently open and if that path is healing or whatever it is then you see it there that means that you are efficient in the dispensing on the, of the power of God to the degree to which you sustain understanding of God's ways, his methodologies. Hallelujah. So in my example, like I gave, every time there was delay in a man's life, restoration came exclusively through the prophetic are we together now that means that if i want the power of god to bring restoration to this man the power of god must flow through the prophetic to produce that effect if it flows through any other channel it may bless the man but not restoration are you getting what i'm saying now that means that if i want restoration i will create a pathway of the prophetic for the anointing to come and bless this man this is very very powerful because most believers um and this is the reason why you may want to reason this with me for a while that our fathers respectfully speaking and all those who have gone to be with the lord a number of them did not pay the price to get illumination and spiritual enlightenment are we together they subjected themselves in much fasting and prayer and they had very heavy deposits of the anointing but you notice that with the level of anointing they had their results were small because the understanding that will give that anointing expression to manifest in the various facets of their lives were not there we went to second kings yesterday and we saw how that the problem was not the oil the problem was the vessels the vessels if there is a vessel of the understanding of the healing ministry and it is filled the anointing will flow if there is a vessel of prosperity the anointing will flow if there is a vessel of church growth the church will grow if there is a vessel of speed etc etc so it's not enough to be anointed that's why jesus mentored people by giving them over 99 percent teaching they sat under a strong teaching ministry and then in one day they received an impartation we reverse the case in our generation we are always doing impartations we lay hands you fall down you stand up we lay hands you fall down you stand up we lay hands you fall down you stand up but the results do not change because the understanding that gives it expression is not there notice that for such people who have been receiving impartation for many years the day they get any light the result is almost instant because it's like the anointing has been piling up just waiting for the doorway that opens for it the walking knowledge of the power of god i believe in the power of god but it is very frustrating to not know how it can translate to the results of people your being anointed does not mean anything until lives are changed and transformed in a way that is notable enough please listen listen take note of it in a way that is notable enough in a crowd like this my brothers and sisters please reason with me that in a crowd of thousands of people like this and several others from around the world imagine that at the end of this service only three or four or five people are healed delivered or lifted by god's standard even by human standards you did a bad job so you are a blessing to the degree to which you have intimacy with god and you understand the operations of his divine power enough to be able to flow like a river Shabakataya. flow like a river so that in one hour someone who is probably standing I'm, I'm told they had to create a new overflow so let's use the overflow four right you're just standing at overflow four hoping 
Lord, will you touch me? And in five minutes, you check around and you cannot understand your life again because you have moved to another dimension. His divine power. His divine power. Please hear me. Whatever issue of concern, it is the divine power of God that is able to produce it. We're here thousands of us with our various requests representing our pain, our disappointments, our frustrations, our expectations. My assignment as a man of God is to bring your challenges face to face, first with God and then his divine power. And then if I can do that, I'll finish my assignment. My assignment is to connect your situation with the power of God and get out of the way. And then you watch the wonder-working power of Jesus. When you don't get out of the way, you become an interruption to the efficiency of the power. So the assignment of an anointed man of God, as it were, is to allow the Lord to use him by the Spirit of God to connect the challenges of people to his divine power. If you can do that, a miracle service has started. Hallelujah. And so then it becomes, it becomes mandatory upon us, men and women of God, to study the systems that can help us connect the power of God to people's problems. Like you connect a, a, a fuse to a socket and switch it on. You finish yours and the gadget begins to work. It works for as long as that connection is there. Mm. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So let it not surprise you if within the next few minutes you turn around and cannot see what you came here with. It is his divine power. Mm. His divine power. Remember the testimony of our precious mother was so touched when she shared that testimony. Just like that. In the twinkling of an eye, someone's life changes. The twinkling of an eye, a grace you did not come here with goes back with you. A twinkling of an eye, a challenge that you have had that has been age long. Listen, let me tell you, don't get too used to the hand of Satan on your life. Just because his hand has rested for a long time does not mean it cannot be lifted. You tried lifting it with different graces. So they did their best, but there are graces that can lift it is true it is true praise the lord your assignment tonight is to believe that his divine power is able to come through for you and then number two to be prepared listen listen please this is your own part now to be prepared to respond by faith what does it mean to respond by faith to listen for the instructions that make for your result it's important every result has a strategy a pathway that produces it if your challenge is jericho you need to know how to go around and shout if your challenge is the red sea you need to know how to use the rod to part it if your challenge is five loaves and two fish to feed five thousand you need to know the mystery of thanksgiving that makes for multiplication if your challenge is the leprosy of Naaman, you need to know how to go to Jordan to wash. All results are not produced by the same strategy. It is the same divine power. But your faith must be anchored on an instruction that is tied to it. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day. It says that you will be set up on high above all nations of the earth and that all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. Praise the Lord. That's how it works. So while you take your eyes away from your pain, you must set your gaze on something else. Jesus, the possibilities. Is it true, oh God, that you can turn my family's situation around? Seven of us came for this miracle service. And Lord, I don't even know where you will start. But then you listen. You listen. You listen. Sometimes it can come as one prophetic word. And it's done. Look, let me tell you something. The 
ease with which miracles happen i think is the reason why many people cannot receive it how do you look at someone like this and say go is done what does that mean you are making a mockery of me i sang praise and worship i rolled on the ground and i stood here and all you tell me is go was that not what naman was complaining about he said you mean you want to embarrass me i just go and wash in a river i thought you will even come out and salute me and give me something more intelligent but you see the ways of god are not like the ways of men jesus was speaking to nicodemus and he said the wind blow it where it listed he says you cannot tell where it's going nor where it's coming he says so is one who is led of the spirit you have to be spiritual to understand the ways of god you have to be spiritual because traditions of men can make the word of god of non-effect it can strangle the potency of god's word but tonight i agree with you and i know that there are people here who are determined that everything we are going to be doing here within the next hour or so that it will culminate to a tangible result let me tell you this i love jesus christ i love him with all my heart and i made a vow unto god that among the many things that will happen to the people that he ever brings to me and puts under my care wasting their time will not be part of it i made up my mind by god that you should not come for koinonia twice to testify no 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 you should come twice to grow you should come twice to learn you should come twice to know god but one encounter should be enough it's true one encounter apostle i came to take fresh fire one encounter one encounter i came to break the bands of witchcraft and wickedness in my family one encounter one encounter apostle my family members did not come with me but they asked me to represent them it doesn't matter one encounter the power of god master he says he told the centurion let me come to your house to honor you being a captain in the army he said no for i am also like you a man under authority i understand the stretching power of authority i may be limited as a person but the roman government has a jurisdiction and that whoever is under the influence of that government can feel the effect of the government so they may not be here but the earth is still the lord's so they are still within the jurisdiction of his reach and if you are a man under the authority of that owner then the power of god should flow right in on the integrity and the sovereign power of that owner to touch anybody anywhere this i believe this i believe this i believe apostle i don't even know the name of my situation i've gone to the hospital they have done everything jesus if he said he was just healer would have found reason to be afraid later on but he says i am the resurrection and the life what is resurrection giving life to something that has no business having life resurrection resurrection I am he that was dead but now is alive apostle i came here with my cv is it that god cannot give me a job i've gone around looking for jobs again and again i've applied everywhere god should see my family what then is the blessing if the anointing cannot change the situation what does it mean to be a blessing as a man of god does it mean to preach well does it mean to be sympathetic to people's situation as important as that is sympathy does not produce result it only provides comfort god did not call us to be sympathizers no he says the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me too then he begins to list all the things that will happen and then at the end of all of those things he says to give them beauty for ashes the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called oak or the trees of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might in their result be glorified 
john chapter 17 and verse 1 jesus christ lifted up his eyes to the heavens praying and he taught us a principle there verse 1 he says father the hour has come and then he said glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee so how is god glorified when the son is glorified how is god glorified as a healer when the son is healed when the daughter is healed how is god glorified as a lifter when the son is lifted when the daughter is lifted how is god glorified as a deliverer the dimension of god that he gets glory from is the dimension that the result manifests in your life he cannot be glorified as one who is quick and powerful until your life testifies it your goodness is real i testify your goodness is real your favor is real i testify your power is real i testify how then do you know the favor of god is real listen 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 your faith must grow to trust the difference between faith and trust is that faith is predicated on god's integrity are we together now it, uh, on who god is but trust is based on his integrity and his track record you cannot trust a man until there is a track record are we together if i'm meeting you for the first time dr emeka and they tell me you are a doctor I will have faith in you i can't trust you it's too early it's too early to trust you i will see what your injection does for me are we together now when you give me an injection and i cannot walk what should happen to you when you give me an injection i am fine then i come to you and you give me a recommendation and it works i begin to note you and associate you with my joy and then eventually i conclude that this man is worth my belief this man is also worth my staking my all to so that the day you give me an instruction that i do not understand i can reach back at the archives of your track record and say i may not know what you are saying but i know what you said and i know what i saw genesis 21 verse 1 genesis 21 i testify i testify that your goodness is real i testify i testify that your goodness is real and the lord visited sarah as he had said and the lord did to sarah as he has spoken trust in the lord how do you trust in the lord take cognizance of his benefits be observant what did he do in 2001 what did he do in 2005 you see if the lord had not been on our side now may israel say on the strength of that track record they named him they gave a name that should not change a testament of their trust A testament of their trust so your assignment is to believe that god is able take your eyes away i repeat take your eyes away please take your eyes away from anything that is not jesus tonight and focus apostle they've prayed for me a prophet just like you prayed for me an apostle just like you prayed for me a pastor even conducted night vigils in our house i know and i respect god and i respect the grace upon that man except that one more thing i did not teach you about the anointing is that not every anointing blesses you the man must be sent there were many widows in zarephath but to none was elijah sent when the word of god passes you it does not bless you it is when it is sent he sent not brought he sent forth it was when the king sent for joseph that his life changed when i sent thee lackest thou anything not when you moved around when i sent thee 
because every time he sends it his integrity is upon it tonight god is sending his word to me to you to us the word that leads the word for your ministry the word for your life is going to be a quick walk some of you write from the communion as you partake from the communion you finish your own miracle service you will just join others in rejoicing it's true you know yesterday i observed and we learned yesterday that the reason why the communion does not produce is because we are only eating bread and juice we have not discerned it the bible says there is a sin that a man can commit the sin of not discerning the lord's body you cannot discern the possibilities that come from that body for many years i took communion and i was left in the dark as to the relevance of this thing in my life i would just take the wafer and take the the drink and then stop there nothing happened until i found out that the life-giving factor of everything is understanding understanding is what gives life to the spiritual activities and the processes that we're involved with so it is not enough to just hear it is not enough to just do it is the understanding that sponsors what we do that produces the results i don't know if there are people here tonight who are here insisting that as surely as there is a god in heaven whatever i came with i must leave it here tonight hmm. it is important god is giving you understanding now when i came into the house of the lord then understood i the house of god is bethel not just a place of bread but a place where the bread is broken two men met jesus in m house and they began to discuss the messiah and he was there with them but they could not see and then when he broke bread the bible declares that their eyes were open and he departed my assignment is to continue to study continually by the spirit the processes that makes for the liberty of the saints much more than the transformation of the saints much more than providing an atmosphere for encounters the saints need to be brought to a point where they encounter the reality of god's power the power of god can be encountered hallelujah so we're going to partake of the communion very quickly and for many of you this will be one communion you will not forget it doesn't matter even if you are the one who serves your own communion you may serve it like a ritual the wafa does not have any power to do anything for you the bread the cup does not have any power but how shall these things be when i'm using only bread and cup the power of the highest shall overshadow that emblem and whatever comes out of it can produce any result a handkerchief and an apron is not even alive talk more of having faith but when his divine power comes upon it it becomes an instrument of signs and wonders the air that you breathe and the sound that is produced from you does not sustain any power except that when your speaking becomes the voice of god then it is no longer the words of men john said i am the voice of one so when you hear me you hear that one hmm. hallelujah when it's time to pray for the sick i like you to believe god believe god to set people free we we'll do it very fast because there are so many people and praying for the sick takes a lot of time we'll do it fast and then after that we'll do the deliverance and the impartation and whatever it is that needs to leave you it must go it must go this night it must go this night please jump up on your feet your divine power your divine power able to lift me to a higher dimension in the spirit your divine power is someone praying on the last day of the feast jesus came and said is anyone thirsty 
is anyone thirsty the final day of the feast Shananda Prakatos go ahead and pray please inside outside lift your voices and pray are you praying lord i believe it is your divine power now i know how the results will come your divine power i know how the lifting will come your divine power I'm under the shadow of your wings Your influence is all over me I am under the shadow of your wings Your influence is all over me hey, I am shadow of your wings your influence is all over us we are under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over us yeah. Lift your voice and pray. Sabarando Seneca Tabariatash. Tonight is my night. I discern. I discern. Sabrakato Seneca Prashd. Endele Gabrande Zedika Shobragada Baladabash. Krato Zazigada Barunde Ketosh. Embrakato Zaleke Pradish. Shebradika Posh. Rakato Variada Baladabash. Rakatu in the skemeritash. Rakaparuda si adabaladaba. He barando jele karusi adabaladaba. Please keep praying. hallelujah John chapter 6 John chapter 6 we'll begin our reading from verse 49 to 56 John chapter 6 your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead next verse this is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die 51 i am the living bread which came down from heaven if any man eat of this bread he shall live forever and the bread that i will give is my flesh not is like my flesh is my flesh which i give for the life of the world 52 and the Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Stop here. Just, just go back. Just go back. This is what he's saying. That in the flesh of the Son of Man, and in the blood of the son of man is his life that the life of the flesh is in the blood are we together now listen very carefully so that when you partake please keep that scripture when you partake of it with understanding the bible says that you are not just taking a wafer you are not just taking a drink but that you are you are opening up yourself to partake of the life of god next verse 54 whoso eateth my flesh 
and drinketh my blood had i told you the word there is not eternal life it's the word zoe it's not the longevity of the life but the quality of the life and i will raise him up on the last day 55 we're stopping at 56 for my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed the last verse he that eateth my flesh this is it and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and i in him this is a theological concept called the doctrine of interpenetration is the system by which two separate entities are interwoven to become one the same mystery in marriage the same mystery with the spirit of god so that by the mystery of partaking in the communion that means the spirit should not know the difference between your body and god's body are we together now yes let me tell you what that means. Come. Look at this. Emeka, come. Watch this. If this lady is his wife and she's weak and he's strong, his strength is her own too. You understand that? Are you getting me? Not part of his strength. His strength. So if you say she's strong, you are right. Are we together now? This is very important now. That means that when she's strong and he's weak, her strength is his strength too interpenetration and so now when you partake of this although your body may be weak and frail although your finances may be weak and frail although your ministry may be weak and frail although your body may be ravaged by all kinds of demons but here you are introducing like you are shaking the hand of the other partner in a wrestling and here he comes through this mystery as little as this is let me tell you when you understand this mystery you will not even be able to hold this thing you see like this hallelujah i'm going to pray on this and then we're going to distribute it around it's simple enough for you to open you just here open the wafer and then the drink and please the moment you do do not litter the ground do not litter the ground i don't know what provision has been made for that but if no provision has been made whilst you take it provided you are not under the anointing just pass it to the last person at the aisle and then you make it easy for the ushers or whoever is involved to just pick them up you can use the off the bowls or whatever you have to have them we're going to pray please pray in one minute and mention the things that must live your life because they are not found in the life of the Christ. Please pray. By wisdom, O oh God, heaven's gates open up. With understanding, you order the season, creating day and night. Turning darkness into light, arranging the stars to your pleasing. But I can't Blessed are you, O Lord our God, whose words brings in the evening. Please pray one minute. We discern your body. We discern your body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, it should go around. I believe that they just brought this to represent the communion. I'm going to pray on this. This is ordinary welfare and a drink. But not after the power of God comes upon it. It says anything receives power after the Holy Ghost comes on it. Not just men. You shall receive power. The you can be this. Can receive power. Provided the Holy Ghost comes on it.
He didn't say men shall receive power. No. Anything receives power when the Holy Ghost comes upon it. Your pain receives power when the Holy Ghost comes on it. Your ministry receives power when the Holy Ghost comes on it. Your communion receives power when the Holy Ghost comes on it. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon this. I lay my hands upon this communion representing all others that are not here. I decree, oh God, that in a very strange way, may your power flow through this in the name of jesus let it bring miracles let it bring all kinds of deliverances in the name of jesus whoever partakes of this tonight in the name of jesus i declare instantly may your power begin to rest upon them let all kinds of breakthroughs begin to happen let infirmities give way in the name of jesus let deliverances let devils and demons begin to leave let doors begin to open in the name of Jesus Christ. My flesh is meat indeed. We partake with understanding. We partake with understanding. Please make sure everybody something will begin to happen to you as you partake of this you will marvel and wonder at the power of the communion go ahead take it with faith and watch the wonder walking power the wonder walking power of Jesus. The wonder walking power of Jesus. bring all those under the anointing out please bring them out quickly while we wait for the rest to finish please just bring them out quickly something is opening up in your spirit man my flesh is meat indeed my blood is drink indeed Please bring those under the anointing. There is a reason why I ask you to bring them. I want to pray for them. Something is already happening in the realm of the spirit. Oh, 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 Ha 
Rabalaka Paracatosa Zazia Rata Paranda Seketeleka Paracatos. tonight God is setting people free when there is understanding to your spiritual activity then the power is released the power is released you will not believe the kinds of burdens that are leaving people already mm. my flesh is meat indeed my blood is drink indeed he that eateth of my flesh and drinketh of my blood hath my life not been planted by my father will be uprooted is it not written in your word that for this purpose the son of God was made manifest that he may destroy I decree in the name of Jesus we are going to begin to minister now that every force that is not of the Christ Right now I decree and declare by an apostolic and a prophetic rod scattered around this crowd inside and outside everybody under any kind of bondage I decree be free now be free now I command judgment on strange spirits in the name of Jesus the spirits of ancestry, the workings of bloodlines and territories, I come against you by the God of heaven. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is liberty. Listen, we are still praying. Please pay attention. I'm praying now. 
the Lord is showing me families. I'm seeing families under an intense yoke of retrogression. Nothing moves in that family. You can go to school, it doesn't make any difference. You can get a job, it doesn't make any difference. Have a business, it doesn't make any difference. I stretch my hands. Where are those people? Inside and outside. I declare right now, the power of God is coming upon you. It's time for your family to be released. At the count of three. One, two, three. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. I lose your family. I set them free. I set them free. Shamanda kaskabarakata. Embrekete kaparoto seteka. Zekete kete kete kete. Zebaka proske baruzasia. Embrakata lakato zasia rakata. Hemanda barandos kabarikata. Surely there is an end, the Bible says. Surely there is an end. Even weeping endures only for a night. I declare freedom on those families now. I declare freedom. Don't be distracted. Just pay attention, please. Samarakato Zekadesh Ilabanda Rahaska Barukato Shadekata Paruzes Yanakata Breketela Kuzianamas Kratena Zazia Makatos You rise to a level and then you crash back is a pattern that exists in families. There's nothing wrong with rising, keep rising, but you plateau at a level and then you crash back. I stretch my hands now. This is what the Lord is showing me. My God. My God. I decree and declare. The spirit that causes men to rise up and crash back in shame. Represented in anyone here. The legal hold upon which you operate is caused now in the name of Jesus. I release such people right now. Be released in the name of Jesus. Be released in the name of Jesus. Overflow 3, please lift your hands. The Lord is showing me something happening in Overflow 3. Overflow 3, please lift your hands. Mighty God. Mighty God. I see a lot of attacks. Serious attacks on Overflow 3. I don't know for whatever reason that the people that are sitting there, I'm seeing a lot of attacks. At the count of 3, Overflow 3. I want you to shout the name Jesus and there will be a mighty deliverance there. Overflow three. One, two, three. Shout Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm seeing the gate of a prison and I'm seeing people inside. The gate of a prison, like the front of a prison. And I remember scripture says to open, to set at liberty them that are bound. There are people who are moving, but are in prison. All sorts of prisons. Right now I decree and declare, even by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let the doors and the chains and the yokes that keep you in bondage. I declare that those chains are loose now. I declare that those chains are loose now. And for all those in front here, representing all those that I'm praying for, I declare not only that the spirits leave you, but that whatever they took from you, as surely as the God of heaven leaves, your families must testify of that restoration. Therefore, leave them now. Go, go. Out of them now. In the name of Jesus, release their families. Release their spiritual lives. Release their finances. Hmm. 
Parados is a Hasaka Parodasia. Lembragedos Kalarishas, Hebras Kodash. Prakato Baradus as Yanakatabaladash. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, this role, lift your hands. I just see angelic activities happening here. And I'm seeing something being removed out of people's stomachs. This is what I'm seeing here. Something is being removed out of people's stomachs. That's what the Lord is showing me. Just this role. I don't know what it is, but God is uprooting something that should not be there by the Spirit of the living God. Let it go. Let it go in the name of Jesus. I place the word of God upon that situation. It must let you go right now. The Lord is taking something out. I still continue to see this vision. God is taking something out of people's stomachs. The spirit of the Lord is there is liberty. There is liberty. There is liberty. There is liberty. I'm seeing the feet of a man and I'm seeing the feet of a man under chains under chains this is what I see and the Lord is showing me fire coming to break and consume the feet I know that this vision is a representation of stagnation again over men and families and I declare right now according to that which the Lord has shown me in the name of Jesus that anyone whose feet is being tied in the same position right now by the power of the Holy Spirit right now something is happening to people I decree I decree and I declare let there be liberty now inside outside let there be liberty right now let there be liberty liberty I command progress to your life move forward I push you by prophecy move forward make progress move forward make progress i forbid stagnation move forward make progress I don't know how to pray this prayer now those who are fine up here can return to their seats I want to pray a prayer and this will affect a lot of people you don't have to bring the people out I found myself pray this prayer again and again and again and again almost everywhere I've traveled in the last two to three months the Lord has mandated that I pray this prayer and my goodness, the testimonies that have come from this. This is the Lord walking in the midst of his people. That lady is not yet free, my friend. Osha, be discerning. In the name of Jesus, that lady is not yet free. It's a realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power. Moving in this place, we're in the presence of angels with God's glory on their wings. And like the voice of many waters, I can hear the angels sing. You are holy, you are holy, you are holy.
please someone should join the PR can join the ushers protocol can join the ushers I want to pray there is a grace for speed there is an exact grace speed is not progress no no there is a difference between progress and speed I had an encounter with the Lord and he placed this grace upon my life if not that it happened I know there is advancement and I know there is speed but I never knew what it was and how it operated until the Lord gave me an encounter truly let me tell you there is a real grace for speed and when that grace comes on you you will join the world in shock as to what becomes of your life and the Lord wants that grace to come on somebody this night there's someone here that needs this grace this is why you came it's not like you are stagnated but it takes forever if you will believe if you will humble yourself this night and open your spirit you will be surprised I'm going to pray this prayer the reason why I ask some people to join is because every time I pray this prayer people begin to run in the spirit and by the spirit I don't know why it happens that way be sensitive please and then it is of the spirit please don't ask me why it happens that way but if you will let me pray this prayer tonight God can make five years the result of five years to come within even a month I know it works when you have this grace on your life you don't fear delay it makes no difference you will gain time within moments I decree and declare by the privilege of God's grace I stretch my hands inside everywhere overflow one two three online father I pray right now let the grace for speed at the count of three come upon someone one two three take that grace now take that grace now take that grace now I shift you speed speed Speed! Kela bataka tabarakata. Embregete kete kete kete. Speed to your spiritual life. Speed to your finances. Speed in ministry. Speed in business. Speed upon your influence. This is a major answer to your prayer. I declare it again. Speed speed receive it receive it it is not by might nor by power but by the spirit of god you can be picked up upon the wings of the spirit and do things that eyes have not seen that ears have not heard i pray it again those outside receive it those outside receive it i declare speed in the similitude of elijah you will run and you will overtake the chariots of Ahab. Hallelujah. 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 We are going to pray. We have to redeem time. There is a lot to do. Your wife started a journey in the spirit. I'm seeing a prophetic progression in her life. There is a prophetic mantle that is searching for her. It's begun gradually. This woman you are seeing, as frail as she may look, but the hand of God will come upon her and she will speak forth the purposes of God with power. I stretch my hands upon you and I pray that the spirit of God will perfect let there be a bathing a bathing of the things that he has begun upon your life a bathing of the things that he has begun my friend come this man we may not have time to prophesy to people there's a lot to do lift your hands I don't know you you are coming from somewhere and there are two graces that God is bringing upon your life 
number one is for your own benefit restoration that's what i hear number two this speed that you see i prayed for is coming upon you i stretch my hands may that grace in the name of jesus first for restoration let there be a restoration of everything the devil has stolen and then i declare speed you receive it now move forward go forward in the name of jesus christ hallelujah there's an elderly woman here called rebecca 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 if we talk to people the time will be gone we have to honor it so that we can do some other things who is that rebecca Please, when you find the person, I want to talk to her. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray for the sick. Kai. This woman is outside. You are not inside. You are wearing a red like wrapper on your head. The same with what is down on you. Mama, your name is Rebecca. Where are you? From outside? I will pray for you now. I don't know you. I've never seen you, but I want to pray for you. The Lord is going to honor you. I decided to take a pause because um, the Lord just asked me to stand here. That's why I'm standing here. I'm standing here because I saw something that looked like a bird just come out of someone right here like this just like that just out of someone this is what i saw in the name of jesus release this family now release this family now in the name of jesus christ madam i'll pray for you your name is rebecca too please come i will pray for you I found the person I'm ministering to, but I'll pray for you. From where, madam? From where? From area C. Area C. Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. What's wrong with your back? Back pain. Yes, yes, this is what I'm true. seeing. You it's get up true, in the morning true. And, true. and then you feel a lot yes, of pain. Sometimes yes. you cannot even wash. Yes, yes. Number two, your chest too. Yes, it's true. Severe it's chest. True around the breast yes, region here yeah. the lord is setting you free right now madam in the name of jesus let it be over right now and forever in the mighty name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ ah i just had like a car crash in my ears you know how an accident just happens right now this is what i just had in my ears and that the family that that should happen for is in this place i'm going to pray right now be free now i command death you are a spirit i judge you by the god of heaven and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage i want to pray for you madam in the name of jesus christ that god himself will bless you and not only bless you where are your children madam huh here. your children are here yes where are they patient isaac patient isaac sarah this may be the last word and then we have to pray for the sick there's a lot patience and isaac now only will know they here let me just pray for you if, if you are the only one who can represent them stand up please my friend mama i will pray for you in the name of jesus christ because i'm seeing a very major breakthrough coming to this family the lord himself is bringing it so a very major breakthrough i have no business saying anything god did not tell me i've not prayed the prayer yet yet you are receiving it is the grace for favor the grace for favor the grace for favor this man will be like a well-watered garden 
that the favor of God will call him Beulah and Hephzibah. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you, Ma. Please hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, the breakthrough that the Lord shows me, let it come and come speedily. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are her daughter? Let me pray for you, my dear. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will not say there is something in your stomach growing. Huh? I'm rebuking something. They will not tell you that there is a growth that is growing in your stomach. I just laid my hands and God is healing someone in overflow one. Oh, please hold on. There is a growth. There is a growth. There is a growth. This has been characterized by extremely painful. Your period is extremely painful. But more than that, there is a growth just around your abdominal area. Overflow one. You don't have to come out. The power of God is touching that person right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, in Jesus' name, by the spirit of the living God, we declare your liberty. Complete, total, final. In Jesus' name I pray. Praise the Lord. Now, we're going to pray for the sick. Praying for the sick takes a lot of time. Our time is already gone. I, I bless God that there are a number of hands tonight. Now, listen, we believe in the power of God to touch people, to lift people. And most times you would notice in my external ministrations, I don't have time to minister to people one by one. But because this is a miracle service dedicated for that. The Lord has honored us to be a light on this wise in this city. And it is important that we're fair enough to just allow the power of God extend to people. We'll do it very fast. Um, all of the overflows, all of the overflows, I would request that you just move those trusting God for healing particularly. Please, I would request that you move to the front of your projector screen. That's where you are going to be prayed for. Um, the ones that spill over do I call that overflow five now I will just request you to be patient we are going to assign a person or two there to minister to you but overflow four three two one and right in here you are here you came standing in for someone or standing in for yourself please make your way out here very quickly and let's trust the God of heaven to set you free you are here full of faith please stand up please stand up if you kneel, there will not be space. Just come, stand. It doesn't matter. You don't have to come in. If you're outside, just go to your overflow, please. Hallelujah. Myself, alongside the men and the women of God represented here, will be praying for you. Look how many people are trusting God to touch them. Hallelujah. Now, please. You don't have to ask anybody to prophesy or speak. Just let them minister to you. If there is need to speak any words, they will let you know. Praise the Lord. There are so many people this night, and so we'll do our best so we can gain time. And just, just line everybody here, and then we'll pray for you. Praise the Lord. prayed for just be patient and allow the men of God minister to you while that is happening our time is already gone please stretch your hands if you've not submitted your request um, you can just wave it and someone will pick it up from you especially for those outside you're yet to submit your request just stretch your hands right here and let us agree this hold on please this is not religion this is not tradition this is not a ritual this is a mystery it's a revelation let us not get used to doing this just as a ritual for the miracle service because when we have the form without the power then it will not bless us there have been many many wonderful testimonies that have come out from here and um, since I'm the only one here, let the men of God minister to you. If you are still being ministered, to just focus on the ministration. But then for all others, just stretch your hands towards me. And let's agree that these Egyptians we see today, 
that we will see no more please agree release your faith and believe we are praying we may not be able to prophesy to you personally we may not be able to give you a word of knowledge but this is a representation of your heart your pain your desire your expectation the bible says and thine expectation shall not be caught short stretch your hands and let's agree there is a god that answers prayers is someone praying online pray the overflows pray father we declare we're declaring as the church we're releasing an anointing the divine power of god upon these requests some of these requests are death sentences some of them are humanly impossible situations but unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come in the name of jesus we declare upon these requests a representation of the tears and the pain of your people we decree and we declare makratos kalambre de keparuza ziakata bradias ile pereto zaziakata baranda gadash kritos kalabarakata balana bush shalabaranda kapuros likete kete kete barada bash we decree and we declare manda prados kaziza hash kalabaranda kata arise for your people by the abundance of your mercy give your people testimonies in the name of jesus jiprakatos kalabarakata believers pray we are agreeing likato janana katabarados jabros katabaranda kata supernatural manifestations of your power supernatural manifestations of your power supernatural manifestations of your power hela barakata soza brendege de bash lord in the name of jesus we declare supernatural walkings of miracles tonight we declare healing miracles we declare miracles of provisions we declare miracles of jobs we declare sentences of death are broken in the name of jesus we declare supernatural interception angelic interventions tonight we declare diverse kinds of miracles diverse workings of miracles in the name of jesus we declare creative miracles we call new organs we call new jobs we call for children we call for deliverances of families we declare miracles on every side let tears of family be wiped away in the name of jesus we declare diverse testimonies tonight by the workings of miracles by the divine power of god in the name of jesus thank you father Father, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your, the heavens are open in the name of Jesus. We thank you for creative miracles. We thank you for money miracles. We thank you for supernatural deliverances. We thank you, Lord, for manifesting your power. We thank you for miracle babies. We thank you for miracle job. We thank you for special miracles. Father, Lord, we thank you. For the manifestation of the world you have decreed over our lives in the name of jesus thank you heavenly father in jesus name father in the name of jesus christ we receive answer to every prayer request 
here tonight in the name of Jesus. We receive answers tonight in the name of Jesus. Special miracles uh, in the name of Jesus. Diverse kinds of testimonies uh, in the name of Jesus. Angelic interventions uh, in the name of Jesus. Supernatural supplies uh, in the name of Jesus. Great open doors uh, in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, O oh God. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Let's give Jesus praise. We agree that as we have declared, it is done in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Our time is gone. Please give me two minutes. We must do the impartation. We have been fasting. We have been praying. And we have trivialized impartation in the body of Christ. We are always looking for people to lay hands on, always looking for people to prophesy on. So every time we talk about an impartation, there is hardly an expectation. But a real impartation brings result. You can carry something now that you did not come here with. Please believe. An impartation is not just an anointing for ministry. I told you it's a transference of possibilities. Praise the Lord. So in the next two, three minutes, please let your heart be opened. You don't have to bring anybody out under the anointing. Just guide them, but please receive. Please receive. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. No matter the quality of your secret place, you will need impartation. There are possibilities in your life that cannot evolve just from your secret place. You will need to tap into the provision that has been vested in the body. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus. The grace, you don't have to kneel. Please, you don't have to kneel. The grace that makes for a new level of visions. People have lost visions in the body of Christ. We tell lies that we are seeing, but we are not seeing anything. Father, the eyes that see genuine visions, let there be a restoration. Let that mantle fall upon someone right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, the eyes that can see into the realm of the spirit, the ears that can hear the sound of the spirit. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. That prophetic river locked up within your spirit in the name that is above all names the grace for the prophetic in a new dimension who is this grace coming upon upon all flesh he says I will pour out my spirit receive that anointing now in the name of Jesus I believe in miracles and I believe that there is a distinct grace for signs and wonders I'm stretching my hands I'm seeing a dove this is what I'm seeing just like a bird hovering round in the name of Jesus Christ upon as many whose hearts are open father the anointing the real anointing for signs for wonders inside outside especially upon men and women of god i decree and declare let this grace for signs and wonders fall upon you now in the name of jesus fall upon you now for your church for your fellowship for your prayer group i say it again for your church for your fellowship for your prayer group receive it in the name of jesus the spirit of wisdom there is a spirit of wisdom it says doth not wisdom cry wisdom speaking says with me are he says by me kings reign and princes decree justice it says with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness I declare the grace to know what to do 
is called the spirit of wisdom the grace to know what to do let it come upon you right now let it come upon you right now let the spirit of wisdom come upon you right now let the spirit of wisdom come upon you right now please help those under the anointing Talabarus kanamahashanas ratakapalusas yadas I want to release favor the grace that can make a king say up to half of my kingdom there is a grace for favor I testify to you people of the living God there is a grace for favor it is not of him that run it nor of him it is not of him that that um, run it what's the scripture we net not of him that run it but of the Lord that showed mercy he said thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion and the reason why you have mercy is because the time to favor her yea the set time favor will take away hardship from your life not just financially even spiritually i decree and declare receive the grace for favor it's coming upon you receive the grace for favor receive the grace favor in ministry favor in business favor in ministry favor in business favor in ministry favor in business in the name of jesus every geography has its favor may the favor associated with your geography if it was on the rocks the king built on the rocks it was an advantage if it was the sea they channeled the water for productivity every territory has access to favor i declare that the favor a portion for your territory let it rest upon you right now i want to pray for the spirit of revelation to make all men see the fellowship of this mystery let me tell you this I confess to you sincerely under God that by the privilege of God's grace I'm a student of the word but I can tell you this no matter how frequent you read this there is a spirit that must come on you for your eyes to see otherwise sometimes you will see but what you will see is error sometimes what you will see will deceive you I'm praying for you we need revelation we need revelation we need revelation we need revelation some of you started with a rich deposit of this spirit but as it is right now you open scripture and you don't see anything all you continue to do is copy the messages of men of god verbatim i declare that a unique grace for revelation let it rest upon you right now access inside access inside access inside into the mysteries of the kingdom this is the year of extraordinary fruitfulness i believe there is a grace for wealth i believe it i believe there are principles for wealth i believe there are understandings that can bring resources but i believe there is a grace there is an exact spiritual grace that works by causing men to come with their blessings when that grace came upon saul three men holding two loaves of bread each saluted him and gave him one in the name that is above all names in this season that god has ordained for the body that in addition to the prosperity of our souls in addition to understanding influence and the principles of spiritual transformation let the grace that can cause a man to rise and become as strong as a nation financially may that grace rest upon you may that grace rest upon you may that grace rest upon you in the name of jesus i believe there is a grace that shields men from destruction he said destroy it not for there is a blessing in it 
don't touch this one there is something upon it i decree and declare let the mark that exempts men from terrorism from kidnapping from assassination from accidents the grace that exempts receive it right now for you and for your family receive it right now receive it right now i declare that whatever you have lost coming here it doesn't matter how long please believe release your faith right now in the name of jesus christ i command a sevenfold restoration i command a sevenfold restoration restoration of anointings of money of ideas of relationships of access of illumination in the name of jesus i pray for every ministry represented here whatever has clamped your wings so that your influence cannot spread beyond certain borders i declare by the power of the spirit shift to a new dimension shift to a new dimension of teaching of the miraculous of the demonstration of the spirit in the name of jesus christ i will multiply them they will not be small i will glorify them they will not be few whatever keeps you small in the name of jesus i decree and declare that power is broken over you now all those trusting god for jobs here you are trusting god you have agreed with god and said lord said to me give me an honorable job i release my faith with you and i decree and declare in the name of jesus that by this time next month let it please the lord that you return with testimonies let me pray for those in business father the grace that came upon tyre and sidon that made them to be called the marketplaces of the earth i decree and declare that the spirit not only of innovation but the mastery to exchange your value the grace the fortitude to know how to exchange your value such that you are rewarded may that grace come upon you in the name of jesus christ I speak to every dying business here. Hear the word of the Lord. Come alive now in the name of Jesus. Everyone trusting God for the fruit of the womb. In the name of Jesus, whether for you or for your loved ones, we agree by the power that put Jesus in the womb of Mary. In the name that is above all names, is called the power of the highest that can put a seed in the womb of a woman and keep that seed until it delivers may that grace and that power come upon you now we cause barrenness we cause impotency in the name of jesus whoever has what it takes to favor you the bible says withhold not good from them that is due when it is within your power i declare whoever has the power to support you the power to help lift you we compel them by the spirit to favor you in the name of jesus christ feed unto me according to your word that's what mary said according to your promises i can stand secure Carve upon my heart the truth that sets me free according to your word, O oh Lord. Be done to me, be done to me according to your word according to your promises i can stand secure put 
Lord, you carve upon my heart the truth that sets me free according to your word, O oh Lord. Be it unto me. This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth. It says, but thou shalt meditate therein, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, that thou mayest observe to do, to do, not to wish, not to sing, not to chorus, not to argue, to do all that is written therein. And it says, if you do it, you will make your ways prosperous and you will have good success. I believe this word. I believe it has the ability to change my life. I believe it is powerless if I ignore it. I believe it is powerless if I refuse to act upon the truths that are there. I believe it is powerless if I refuse to believe and pay attention to it. But if I pay attention to it, it will change my life. Hallelujah. Only you are holy. Only you are worthy. Only you are wonderful. For there's no You are wonderful. Only you are wonderful. For there's no one else like you. Testimony. He's a testimony. That's what he's making your life become a testament. He's a testimony. Can you sing it one more time? He's a testimony. He's a testimony. If you pay attention to these truths that you are receiving, that will be your song. He's a testimony. That if you take the principles of the word of God and you make up your mind listen listen agreed that before now you didn't have access to truth agreed that you were born poor agreed that you were born under yokes and curses and all forms of idolatry agreed that you were born under irresponsible parents Agree that you did not have the opportunity to get these truths on time. Agree that you made a lot of mistakes and blundered and blunders in the past. Agree. You may not be able to do anything about yesterday. 
but the Holy Spirit is still saying if you pay attention you can still catch up hallelujah you may not be able to do anything about yesterday some of us have made blunders out of our lives some of us have wasted opportunities some of us have allowed the devil to take advantage of a lot of things forget about that see all your pain of yesterday as the school fees you have paid for ignorance but from today it is absolutely within your power to make up your mind and predict your future and the greatest way to predict your future is to create it the word of God is powerful but you will never understand the power that is in the word until you understand how it makes people powerful the word of God does not make people powerful just by default. No. No. Hallelujah. Come, promise. Let me show you three things that the word of God does. It's an admonition tonight. Please pay attention. Let's call this guy a drunkard, a smoker, poor, broke, on his way to hell. It's, it's just an example irresponsible call him anything womanizer whatever just name it watch this this brother is the way he is listen to me because there is an ideology are you getting what i'm saying there is a mindset that was enshrined in him either as a result of his past as a result of his background as a result of the influences around his life so he grew up with certain convictions and based on what he knew to be greatness he grew up seeing other people smoking and drinking and sleeping around and they felt like big boys and he was attracted to their proposal of what they call greatness and he permitted it to become part of his mindset are you getting what i'm saying now he never as he is right now from the example i'm giving you he doesn't know this gentleman he doesn't know that there are laws in this kingdom he does not know that life can be predictable he does not know that it is up to him and the holy ghost to birth the quality of his life he's waiting for mother nature he's waiting for situations wondering why nothing seems to work hi and then listen 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 jesus christ the word of god comes watch this when the word of god comes the first thing the word of god does is to reveal to him the inferiority of his current position because you will never change until you are dissatisfied with where you are why should I change if I'm okay with where I am are you getting what I'm saying so the Holy Ghost opens you up to a new horizon through the world and you see that life can be lived at another level that there can be a level of excellence beyond that which you have seen and so this brother sits under an anointing like this and listens to the word of God and the word of God begins to challenge him at first he will resist the word because the word of God will make him take responsibility for his current position and we hate taking responsibility that's why we love passing blames to demons is that true we love passing blames to spirit entities and say they are the reasons and now this brother is finding out that there can be a quality of life and by the way when he is alone after drinking and smoking and living life at a lower level the truth is that in his secret place there is a cry are you getting my point he wants a life higher and greater i've spoken to all kinds of people cultists smokers and the rest there is none of them that likes their current state it's just that they have become slaves to strongholds and ideologies 
and the word of God comes the word of God comes and after the first message this gentleman goes back with two ideologies the one he already has that says you can go back join those friends live your life say it does not matter allow anything and hope that one day things will get better or take responsibility and realize that the word of God can frame a new life and when he returns and sits sufficiently under the word of God something begins to change hallelujah he permits this mind to be in him that was in Christ Jesus all of a sudden the grace to adopt the new mindset that is consistent with the laws of the kingdom this gentleman now knows that it's not like God chose to make others rich and leave others poor that's what mommy told him that's what daddy told him very innocent but it's not true now he knows that wow I can partner with the Holy Spirit and there is an economic system to this kingdom hallelujah then he now knows that being a father is not all about getting a woman pregnant and having children. You must be ready to take responsibility because you are building another future. And he's receiving this and he's changing. And while it is changing, his friends begin to notice that he's dissatisfied with the mindset he used to advocate. Are you getting my point? As a result, they will become envoys of the lower mindset and they will try to lure him back to where he's trying to live using scornings, criticisms and all of that they say we give you two weeks all this church thing you are doing, you will come back and then they find out that he never returns brothers and sisters, in three or four years, this same guy will come back, this is him transformed now he's understood that Christianity is not all about going to church and just singing hymns and worship and choruses, that it is a school is a programming it proposes a new mindset the same mindset that makes heaven the way it is and when he receives it he will now return and meet those guys still there by that time the other brother is already 33 or 35 are you getting my point his eyes already stained with drinking for years his mouth everything his life his liver is almost dying and this brother comes changed everything around him is changed you can choose to remain where you are you can choose to keep coming for koinonia and enjoy the euphoria of participating in an apostolic activity that God is doing in a territory you can choose or you can make up your mind and say, Lord, every time I come to your presence, I realize that there are two mindsets that war in me. And when I come, I am ready to let my old ideologies die. It was because I believed them. Look at the way they made my life. I believed that sickness was the will of God. A mindset. I believed that my genotype would never change I believe that I can just die any day anyhow it's like that it happens if it comes give glory to God but when the word of God comes it begins to propose to you a new ideology it tells you life can be lived at another level whereas you were depending on everybody you've heard of all those kinds of things and you, you are always hoping that people become successful and then when they come say bros anything that's a mindset and all of a sudden the word of God calls you into a place where you realize that indeed shall all the families of the earth be blessed and your mindset changes lay your hands upon your head and pray in one minute and say I allow my mindset to change go ahead pray Before your presence came and changed me. Pray. Lay your hands upon your head and pray. And say, Lord, this mindset must change. 
it must change I received the mindset because I grew up in poverty because I grew up in idol worship but right now it must change it must change I received the mindset as a result of my denomination but it must change my mindset about finances must change my mindset about my life must change my mindset about the Holy Ghost must change my mindset about the body of Christ must change my mindset about my future must change my mindset about my academics must change my mindset about marriage must change my mindset about purity and holiness must change my mindset about long life it must change I insist it must change I insist it must change I insist it must change hallelujah listen listen all that needs to change in your life is your mindset the Bible says they limited God in the wilderness a man can limit God a man can limit God please bring this for me bring both of them in. if if this is your mindset watch this if this is your mindset this is all your ideology and point, point. this is all you can receive of God because that's all your mindset has allowed whereas there is so much so based on your mindset this is all of God whereas there is still a lot more are you getting my point if you will allow your mindset to expand the Bible says and when there was no more vessel the oil stopped flowing when the woman sat around and she said this is all I have God said Todd this is the limit to which I can bless you if you brought more vessels it would have continued he says go and borrow vessels borrow not a few and when she got to the limit of how much she believed God said well this is it if you give God a spoon he will fill it if you give him a teacup he will fill it if you give him a gallon he will fill it if you give him a jerry can he will fill it if you give him a drum he will fill it if you give God your space to walk in your mindset as regards success and your academics he will help you there but you will never see his hand in another area if you give God opportunity to influence your ideologies as regards divine healing he will stop there you will excel as far as your health is concerned but you will fail in other areas because they are keys and I will give you not a key the keys 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 open different doors so that you are excelling in one aspect of your christian life should not make you complacent there are other areas the bible says genesis 24 verse 1 and abraham was old and well stricken and god had blessed him in all things the bible talks about a man called naaman the captain of the syrian army hallelujah when you read from second kings i think chapter 5 it talks about Naaman the captain of the Syrian army he said he was a great man he understood the principles of war but as far as living in divine health was concerned there was an issue there thank God for the areas you have gotten turn right now and focus on the areas where the word of God this is how listen when I check areas of darkness in my life I attack it like I attack the devil hallelujah Paul said this one thing I do forgetting the things that are behind thank God for what I now know but there is more and I contend to bring light in every area of my life and then at that point there will be nothing short of beauty and glory from your life 
the first question God is asking you tonight is how much of the light of God have you allowed some of us have mastered the laws of God as far as living in divine health is concerned but some of us have refused to master the kingdom principles that bring wealth and prosperity you are just not interested some of us have mastered prosperity but we've not mastered longevity you must be able to come to a point it's a school the same way you take several courses you can't just take one and the word of God will pass you through a system of renewal and you will come out brand new and then everything around your life will begin to relate to you at the higher level that your mindset has adjusted to you don't need to change people you just need to change and everything around you will also change sometimes we believe when we change everybody around us then we will change not so not so hallelujah Bless you. so you must allow the mind of God to change you if I ask you today and I say Ken can you come and hold the mic and share with the house share with us in five minutes what are the kingdom principles you have learned as far as living in divine health is concerned you have been attending koinonia for a while come and share with the house if you cannot share with the house that means something is wrong is that true if i i call this lady come i won't don't worry don't don't feel come come come, come, come. i won't embarrass you i'm not 90 years old i'm a young man praise god if i call this lady now and i say sweetheart in five minutes talk to the sisters about the two or three major keys you think will make them virtuous women i don't expect you to stand and say hallelujah hallelujah oh you, you know no that means whatever you cannot teach you do not understand it you may be aware that's how many of us read and you find out that when you are in the exam hall, you say, I know it, but it can't come out because it's still in the realm of awareness. You see that? There are three levels of understanding or three levels of gaining knowledge. The first is awareness. The second is understanding. The third is mastery. If you study like that, you will do well. Many of us read and you know that what you've read is there scattered like like a software somewhere in your head and then when you see the questions you know you are saying ah bros is it not what we reverse it's not the issue it can't come out because it has not entered the second phase understanding you see that and the best of the best of the best in the kingdom are not just those who have understood but they have mastered what they understand hallelujah praise the lord say i refuse to be a failure say it i refuse to be a failure it's not just by willpower it's by subscribing to the terms of the word of god you must honor this word you, I don't just want to say word, 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 word. You know, we keep saying get the word. But the truth is for years I didn't understand what people were saying. I didn't understand what they were calling that word. What is it? Is it the verse? Because they say get the word. And I was wondering what is this Bible is plenty. So what is the word? <laughs> Everything. I know people who know it off heart. And it has not changed their lives. Whenever you hear me say the word of God, I mean the accurate revelation of the principles of the kingdom. That's what I call the word of God. Not these vague things. People just say, get the word to mean just read scriptures. No, the accurate revealed word. The Bible says when he broke the bread, not when he held the bread. When he held it, they were still blind. But when the bread was broken, their eyes were open. Until the bread is broken, it cannot bless you. It was when he broke the bread and gave thanks that he began to multiply to produce in their lives 
Hallelujah. Throughout this year, so far, this is this is the ninth month by the grace of God. And by God's grace, I have taught on several things. My goal for the year, when I was having my retreat for the year, I told the Lord to grant me an opportunity to minimize my travels, especially on Fridays, so that I will be around and available. I was talking to someone and I was telling him, if God gives you a walk, and you later leave that work because of international ministry. You are traveling around, blessing the whole world, and you forget about your core assignment. You are, you are still a failure. Have you seen some parents who allow their wives and children, they can donate one million during a fundraising? Have you seen that kind of thing? And yet, they've not even paid the school fees of their children. No. Responsibility is to focus. Don't say, my bad. I'm not asking you to point people. Praise the Lord. So my focus, my, my goal, because the Lord told us that this is the year of light and dominion. Dominion that comes as a resultant effect of illumination. It's not just I, I'm walking in dominion. No. Hallelujah. It's not just I'm walking in dominion. It's that there is an understanding. And I hope that we are learning something. I look some of you who are pastors here or many of us that God will trust with ministries don't deceive God's people don't stand on stage and waste their time telling the amount of the shoe you bought or this and that wonderful you can bring in little jokes here and there but you must make sure the same way a student is taught in school is the same way a Christian becomes an ambassador are you getting my point no matter how complicated my teachings are if you don't understand it to act upon it i have not edified you hallelujah that's why we try to make the word of god as simple as possible so that we, my goal is not to say wow this is a man of god joshua selman has revelation my goal is that you understand the principle how many of you have seen some lecturers that are very intelligent but they can't teach? Have you seen people like that? You know they are exceptionally intelligent. But when they enter the class, you almost have a headache because you know you are in for it. They are intelligent. But they cannot explain their conviction to the understanding of the students. And you find students failing their course. Not because the students are dull. But the capacity to transfer that knowledge to the students but there are other lecturers when you see them you are excited because they know how to make you understand their convictions they can use stories they can use jokes preachers pastors listen to me teach your congregation don't wow them with revelations teach them make them come into a comprehension there are very little children here there are old people here. There are young people here. When Jesus taught, although his teachings were hard, they were not hard because they were hard because the power for the, the, the position it puts the people and the change they would, they would need to make as a result of that teaching was very difficult. Not because the teachings were so hard in that they could not be understood. He used parables. He used a lot of things. hallelujah are you understanding the word of god are you understanding it i thought I've, I've taught i think for for years now there are very few aspects of the kingdom life by the grace of god that i have not touched we've touched on marriage we've taught on 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 finances we've taught on leadership we've taught on success we've taught on the ministry of the holy spirit we've taught on demonology and deliverance different aspects of the kingdom life why because god wants to equip us not just that you are prosperous and that you do not know how to stand against the wiles of the enemy not just that you are sitting concentrating on demons and you do not know that there is an agenda to 
to be fulfilled. Not just that you are praying in tongues and you are not relevant to your corporate work. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many people who pray in tongues but you employ them, they will waste your money and waste your time and drown your work. But they are Christians. When it is 12 o'clock in your place of work and you say lead prayers, you will feel like you should just keep praying till evening. But when it comes to principles that bring productivity, they do not know, they don't care. And that, that faulty mindset comes from we preachers. That faulty mindset comes from the preachers. Hallelujah. We take our limitations and transfer it to the people. So if I am serious about praying in tongues and walking with the Holy Ghost, but I have not been concerned about leadership, I teach the congregation that is not necessary. Is that not true? I just tell them, focus on the Holy Ghost and your life will change. And so you will see an amazing church with the power of God, but there's no excellence. There's no excellence. You see that? Then there are people who is all about leadership and corporate governance and how to do it and principles of church governance and church accounting. Wonderful. But when it comes to the ministry of the Holy Ghost, they kick it out. Everything is intellectual. So you have an excellent church and they run the church like, 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 like a CEO running his conglomerate. But the Holy Ghost is not there. They are too organized. God cannot find expression, not for five minutes. If this guy is supposed to sing for five minutes and for any reason, God just feels like extending his grace and his power upon the people is in trouble. No matter where they are, they must come down for the service to continue. Hallelujah. Then there are people who are not serious. They won't go for work on Monday, Tuesday. They won't apply for work. They'll say, I know my God is faithful. I can get jobs without, without application because of one or two testimonies that have come. Hallelujah. And they sit down at home. The children are getting sick. The wife is getting angry. There is no testimony of the grace of God there. Monday they are in church. Tuesday they are in church. Wednesday they are in church. And I mean from morning to evening. Thursday they are in church. Friday they are in church. Saturday they are in church. And the wife has one small shop that the man is eating everything there because he has not been taught that if you delay gratification, it can bless you. And they don't care. So although they are praying, they are fasting, but they are not rightly dividing the world. And so as a result, there are dimensions of God they will not experience. Every time they go to church, they will fall down. I guarantee you, they will see visions. They will prophesy to you, but they will not be relevant to the corporate world. Therefore, we must be built. Remember the teaching, the full gospel. We must be built holistically. And this is what, by the grace of God, not everybody. See, there are preachers, the way they preach, if you don't plan to be a preacher, their ministry is useless to you. Are you getting my point? And it's not accurate. Because you now turn a CEO to become a man of God. And he finds out that he's struggling. And you say is that he's not spiritual enough. Whereas you are bringing him out of his grace into something else. So, in many churches, the hallmark of spirituality is when you become a pastor. So CEOs, leaders, bankers, all envision times when they will become pastors. Ladies look forward to the pastors. A brother comes, they say, who are you? He say, well, I'm, I'm a brother in one department. I say, please go away. I'm not preparing my life for any kind of anyhow person. Because a mindset has been given that if, if you are excellent and the preacher approves of you, he will stamp you by making you a pastor. But the kingdom is not like that. Our concept of the gospel is not just going to tell somebody Jesus is coming, which is a, an important component of the gospel. But it says, go ye into all cosmos. 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 I've said it again, that the gospel is not just a message. The gospel is an ideology. 
that seeks to enthrone Christ and his value system above a system that does not honor him so if you embrace the gospel it should do certain things it should save you it should prepare you it should empower you and it should release you strategically to be relevant hallelujah so that we now teach people that not everybody is going to be in the fivefold ministry and that the dimensions of the fivefold ministry does not end in the pulpit are you getting my point so when you find out that there is a desire for you to go into finances and be a ceo you do not see it as being less spiritual than an apostle or a prophet who is standing on stage are you getting my point now we have been taught that these things are of lesser value they are not because by and large the preacher will find out that the gospel is free but the means to carry it is not free hallelujah there are many men of god that have powerful messages to give but they are broke they are on air and they can only pay for 10 minutes while they are about sharing a powerful revelation they just cut it program over that's the limit of your money and when we ignore the ministry of kingdom financiers we can have all the encounters of the spirit but it will not be relevant are you getting my point now there needs to be people in the area of governance who can stand and advocate the confab just finished right now and i was so happy because the advocates that was were there to represent the kingdom are thorough men men of both intelligence and men of spirituality so i was very comfortable because i knew that the constitution of this country will be altered for the glory of god but assuming there were all these kinds of people who don't pay attention you go to a confab now and you sit down you are praying in tongues and you don't know anything about the history of your nation and they ask you a question and as a stakeholder representing the body of christ and you disgrace us there and say something you say oh the lord told me they don't know this they don't know this daniel daniel in the bible was a man who showed us how you can combine spirituality and governance and through the dispensation of three kings he reigned and he could not be rejected are you understanding the gospel now this is the gospel and like like azuka was saying now you see with his spirituality and his understanding he's going into the area of the media because he understands there is a mountain there praise the lord when they are kicking god and everything that is of god out of the media and we are here shouting and praying in tongues there's got to be men of power and fire that will get up there supported by kingdom financiers and prayer warriors but they will go they will be able to translate the ideologies of the kingdom to transform society if your knowledge of god cannot transform society it is a waste that's what john wesley said if your knowledge of god your knowledge of god must sustain the ability listen 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 if i plant a church in a region and after five years the community does not see the relevance of the gospel i'm wasting their time is that true believers unbelievers and everyone should attest to the fact that there are a people with a mindset so with time they see that there are miracles happening supernatural acts of god but then they see that with time a school is built for that community and after five years children who would not have the opportunity to go to school now go to school and you build the school and introduce new curriculums you know i've i've, I've told the workers by the time god permits us to start building our schools there are three courses we are going to add you must write it from Genesis 1 to SS3. Number one is called spiritual growth. Number two, financial education. Number three, I don't know what the name is. You must do it from beginning till you finish. We're not just going to teach social studies and, 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 uh, 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 and uh, biology and all of those kinds of things. Elementary science. Thank God for those things. We must educate the people. So that our children are relevant to society and still sustain the values of the kingdom 
listen i'm teaching you how to transform society not just how to build your ministry how to make your ministry relevant there are many of us by the grace of god the reason why our parents are glad that we are coming here is not just because of praying in tongues they are seeing our ideologies change something is changing about your life you are adopting value systems that are attractive when we become agents of change by introducing a mindset that can affect society then they will listen to our gospel hallelujah but for as long as the church keep behaving like fools on stage people just come and they see us bouncing and praying <laughs> and the moment we finish everywhere is rowdy rowdy there's there's all kinds of disorganization no system for honor no system to build people there is no structure you don't behave like that because many many pastors and many ministers we have not been told that we are also agents of change in the institution you see that we we are not we are not told that our relevance transcends just spirituality we have not yet seen ourselves as agents of change to society may god make every one of us here an agent of change in the name of jesus christ that with your understanding of the kingdom you will build schools you will build roads in the name of the lord jesus christ not just that you will heal the sick and cast out devils but that your understanding of the kingdom will be able to translate into something that society cannot refuse hallelujah that's what was happened we must build people we must build people sunday adelaja one great man i ad i admire so much he led the orange revolution in ukraine ukraine is a communist nation even till today but that man not very eloquent in speech sunday adelaja was able to go to ukraine and he, he understood the kingdom and he put the kingdom to the test and he brought the government to its knees he showed how governance and the apostolic ministry he raised a people he was a great man but he was broke and he sat down and studied the principles of the kingdom and in six months he became a multi-millionaire in dollars and in two years he raised 200 multi-millionaires in his church from the scratch from nothing you think the government will not let me tell you let me tell you there is a level of relevance that you can command that even if you are not the first born in your family you don't need to steal any birthright wisdom and influence will give it to you whoever can bring anything on the table is the one who speaks if you can't bring anything on the table you cannot speak any kind of story whoever can bring anything on the table that you are praying and the moment you finish praying that prayer translates into wisdom hallelujah wisdom is the ability to know god's perspective about everything in life tell me what can i do i can live without you i can live without so tell me what can i do I can live without you. Hallelujah. You say the word of God is changing me. Brothers and sisters, I have a guarantee. You will be so successful, it will shock you. No, I'm telling you. The word of God is making you become something you cannot even stop. Hallelujah. The word of God. I know people here by the grace of God who were either of the other faith or came here with all kinds of mindsets. And I am amazed. I'm amazed to see what God is doing. And we give him all the glory. And by the grace of God, 
days will come we will celebrate greatness at another level if you are interested join us there if you get there you don't find me you've not arrived there a day will come we will celebrate greatness at that level yes some of you will just go to your village and count the local governments there and say please this land build churches this is the budget for the kingdom this is the one to sustain the pastors for the next five years let me know when it gets to three years and it's as if you just gave money for recharge card because you have gotten the knowledge of the kingdom see see let me tell you something maybe let me digress this is an, ad an admonition are you getting blessed tonight listen do you know i was sharing with someone yesterday if all the wealth of the world you know there are people who are angry today they are saying if they distributed money it would have reached all of us in nigeria let me tell you something distribute the money in nigeria equally to everybody if you are pregnant you will get for you and your baby i guarantee you in 24 hours it will return back from where it came from because there is a there is a mindset the poor people will do the same foolish things they've been doing although they are spiritual and then it will leave them but the gift of a man the gift of a man the gift of a man by now you know that you have something all your life you've been told you are nothing they call you a lodo and you, at a point you even answer it yourself you believe it but the word of god lets you know that the gift of a man say i have something say it i have something that the world cannot reject i have something i have an ability i have an anointing i have grace i have wisdom i have insight i have intelligence the world cannot reject it and they will pay you for it they will pay you in ways that will surprise you you will see it happen brothers and sisters my bible tells me that if the cloud be full of rain hold on you are not seeing anything now but it doesn't mean any nothing is happening even the devil is a witness that you deserve to be blessed even the devil he's watching your commitment he knows he's a witness satan ran to god and said kai this job's issue god said have you considered my servant job satan said i tried i tried we will feed nations we will feed nations some of you will set up publishing firms that produce the bible in any language any see this is kingdom advancement kingdom advancement is not just intercession kingdom advancement is getting up to confront the gates of hell and there are tools that help us to confront those gates number one the anointing number two wisdom number three excellence number four prosperity these are all the tools that will empower us to confront the gates hallelujah praise the lord this is what god is making out of your life this is what god is making out of your life but the question i want to ask you before we continue is that are you paying attention to what god is doing in your life because i don't want to assume all of us are paying attention there are some of us as you are hearing this thing you're just rejoicing because you're part of the crowd but you know that if it's to be one-on-one -on -one, you and god you're not doing anything you don't even believe what we are saying it looks like we're just gyrating the beautiful thing about success is that it is an individual affair you can choose to believe it or not if you don't believe it will take care of you in the future but if you believe it together we will do great things for the kingdom hallelujah praise the lord that the lord will be able to use me to do anything he wants to do that when god wants to bless people financially i can be available that when god wants to heal the sick i can be available when god wants to transmit the knowledge of the kingdom i can be available this is my prayer 
I'm not just, I don't just want to be relevant in terms of preaching. So if there is no sermon to preach, I cannot do anything for the kingdom again. No, sir. No, sir. Jesus was relevant when he spoke with the scribes and all of those people. He spoke intelligently. When he spoke with tax collectors, he spoke intelligently. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There are four dimensions that we must all operate to see the fullness of God in our lives. Lord, if you're healing someone in this city, please don't do it without me. Just bring out your notebooks. Don't do it without me. That's always my prayer to you. Lord, if you're using great men in this nation, please don't do it without me. Oh, I'm available. Don't do it without me. Before I teach on these four aspects, can you pray? Pray and say, Lord, whatever you are doing, I'm available. Don't do it without me. If you're looking for prayer warriors, I'm available. If you're looking for financial apostles, I'm available. You're looking for career people who will do great things for the kingdom, I'm available. Those of us outside, make sure you are praying. The Lord is hearing you. Lord, if you're looking for intellectuals, men who can combine wisdom and intelligence with spirituality, I'm available. I'm available. I'm available. I'm an agent of change. I'm an agent of national transformation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please look up. Revelations tells us that at the throne of God Almighty and the Lamb, Jesus Christ, there are four living creatures four living creatures that are before the throne and it tells us the first living creature has the face of a lion hallelujah the second living creature has the face of a calf or an ox the third living creature has the face of a man and the fourth living creature has the face of a flying eagle and now realize that everything in heaven is a reflection of who God is. Everything in heaven. Hallelujah. Everything. The construction of the tabernacle from the court of the temple right to the most holy place. Everything speaks about dimensions of God. So it is in heaven. All of the things in heaven attempt to describe the majesty and the glory of God. So the four living creatures are four major dimensions that every believer who wants to reflect the image of Christ in his fullness must be able to walk in. Number one is the face of the lion. The lion is an animal that is known for strength, attitude, courage, dominion. The face of the lion talks about the dimension of your Christian experience where you must walk in dominion and authority. God wants that in a bit to reflect his glory, you must be able to demonstrate the authority of the kingdom. You must be able to walk as a king. Revelations 5 verse 10, it says we have been made unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign, reign, reign hallelujah bible says those of us who have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness he said we shall reign in this life hallelujah say i am royalty everyone say it, i am royalty yes this is a dimension of god that he wants you to reflect because he is a king the royal one and he wants you to walk in that authority the centurion said to Jesus 
and he got Jesus interested. He said, For I am a man under authority. Aha. Uh -huh. Authority. And by reason of being under the authority of the government of Rome, I can tell one, Go, and he will go. And I can tell the other, Come, and he will come. And Jesus said, I have not found such a faith. In other words, I have not found such a mindset and a perspective of the kingdom. No, not in Israel. Although this guy is not part of the commonwealth of Israel, I'm seeing him manifest an understanding that belongs to the kingdom. Hallelujah. Everybody say authority. If you are not walking in authority, there is a dimension of the kingdom experience you are not revealing. You must walk in authority. Authority. There is a difference between authority and power. Power is the force that produces change. Power is the force that produces change. Authority is the legal right to legislate. The legal right to legislate. So good luck can say tomorrow is public holiday. That's not power. That's authority. The police officers and the soldiers don't have authority but they have power. So they can carry their guns and they can carry their koboko. They enforce compliance. Hallelujah. The beautiful thing is that we have authority and there is an anointing put in us. It's called dunamis. Hallelujah. It's the power of the Holy Ghost that enforces compliance. That's why it is released as we speak. So Elijah, the book of James tells us, was a man of like passion. And he prayed earnestly that there be no rain for a space of three and a half years. And while he prayed, there was an energy of the spirit that compelled the territory to comply. Say, I have authority. Say it. Luke 10 19 says behold I give you authority the Greek word is exousia exousia I give you the capacity is delegated power the ability to stand in the stead of another that means the ability to walk in the shoes of another move in my office when Jesus gave us his name he gave us his authority the name of a man represents his office his identity that's why they asked the man they said Peter I mean Jesus I know Paul I know but who are you where is your office hallelujah when Jesus sent the, tw the, the 12 and also when he sent the 70 the Bible says they all returned rejoicing and he asked them a question he said when I sent you not when you went on your own when I sent you lackest thou when I sent you. Everybody say I'm sent. Comes from the Greek word apostolos. Titus 1 verse 1. The highest envoys of the king. So the king brings them. And trains them. Hallelujah. Prepares them. Teaches them his ideologies. And he sends them to go and colonize a country on his behalf. Comes from the Greek word apostolos. The envoys of the king. That's where you get the word apostle. And that's where you get the word ambassador. Envoys that are sent. Everybody say I'm sent. Say it, I am sent. The Bible says as my father has sent me, so send I you. Do you believe it? So say I'm sent. With the backing of heaven. Say it, I am sent. With the backing of heaven. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus teaching on the mount. What we call the Beatitudes. Or the constitution, the unveiling of the constitution of the kingdom. He says, ye are the light. Not of your church, not of your denomination. You are the light. You give illumination. Light of the world. He said, you are a city, not like a city. You are literally a city that is set upon a hill. That cannot be hidden. And he says, neither do men light a candle, a lampstand, a lampstand and put it under a bushel. It's of no use. If you are a lampstand because you are, Revelations chapter 1, the Bible begins to tell us how that John saw. He turned and he saw seven lampstands. And those lampstands represent the Catholic church. The word Catholic is the word the universal church. 
the church of the firstborn the church that has no ministry name represented in the seven lampstands and he said in the midst of the lampstands i saw one so god is always in the midst of his people he said in the midst of the lampstand i saw one like the son of man and he began to describe a lot of things hallelujah so say i have dominion how does that dominion become a reality through the revelation of the word of god in you i told you dominion is not an impartation dominion is not something you claim it's not something you jack yourself into some spooky feelings dominion is a byproduct of knowledge knowledge and understanding psalm 82 verse 5 they know not neither do they understand and so they walk in darkness and the earth is out of course verse 6 have i not said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high he said but ye shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes hallelujah very important you must realize that you have dominion but that dominion is there potentially as you begin to access the light of god's word it puts you in a position where you can walk in that dominion experientially hallelujah i have dominion over principalities over powers over thrones over every name that is named and my dominion is exercised on the strength of my understanding of the way the realm of the spirit works and so i can tell this demon spirit stay and go and when he looks he will see the foundation upon which that statement comes and he knows that i'm not just making empty noise hallelujah because every time i speak to that spirit and i say go there are many scriptures that support my conviction the bible talks about the angels who excel in light and excel in strength who confirms the words of his messengers and i am sent because i am a messenger so when i speak i expect the backing of heaven so don't just speak there must be revelations that sponsor your confidence if i if i turn to Folake and i say be healed what is the revelation that backs up this that i've said if there is nothing she will not be healed hallelujah so as I stand, I remember that the spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me. I remember that I've been authorized. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, Acts 10, 38, with the Holy Ghost and with power. And the Bible says he went about doing good and healing all day that were oppressed, not all day that were sick. So every sickness is an oppression. So when I tell her be healed, I know that it's an oppression hallelujah hallelujah and when i speak and i say be free there is an anointing that leaves me and i understand from isaiah 10 27 that that anointing breaks yokes it takes away burdens when i prophesy and i say in the name of jesus let a new season be opened unto you i understand that the bible says to appoint unto them that mourn to appoint you know what it means to appoint to set a date for their liberty dominion you must learn to walk in dominion to exercise your authority and frankly speaking the church has made progress there we have done a lot helping believers to understand what we call their identity in Christ which is very important that I am seated with Christ I'm above sickness, I'm above poverty, I'm above failure, I'm above defeat. I'm not a non-entity, dominion, all the aspects of our kingly dimension. But the trouble is that sometimes when if all you see in your Christian experience is just that face of a lion, you will get into pride and arrogance and you will never serve the king it will make you self-centered because you would think it's about you you know that when king's reign is all about them is that true every kingdom operates on a monarchy system and monarchy is about the king not the king and many people a monarchy is not a democracy nobody votes the king so when you have the understanding of your kingly dimension there is a disclaimer there because you may be tempted to think that 
all Jesus did was all about you and you alone. So God introduces you to the next dimension, the face of a calf, which speaks of sacrifice and servanthood. So he helps you know that you are a king. You have dominion. But it does not stop there. And if you stop there, you will not reflect the image of the Christ in its entirety. So we have a lot of people. Hallelujah. I have dominion. And they have the jeeps. They have everything. They have all of these things. But they are not relevant as far as the kingdom is concerned. They are not doing anything for God. It's all about me. I received an alert yesterday. I did this and that. Me, me, myself. I am reigning. Hallelujah. I'm going from glory to glory. And God says, when will it stop being about you? And turn to become that of the kingdom. So he introduces you to the face of a calf or an ox. In Bible days, an ox or a calf was the animal that was used to plod the land. That's why the Bible says, do not muzzle the ox that treads upon the corn. So they used ox, oxes and, and wild animals. All of those things to be able to thresh the land. It says, the field is wide but the laborers are few. He said, pray for the Lord of the harvest. Pray that he will send laborers. When it comes to working for God, you are not a son. You are a servant. You see that? You must understand that dimension. When it comes to service in the kingdom, you no longer talk about sonship as it were. No. You talk about servanthood. So Paul can say, Paul, a bond servant. Paul, a bond servant. Because he spent his entire life and went all across Asia Minor and went trying to advocate the ideologies and the counsel and the principles of the kingdom. Everybody say, I'm a king. I'm royalty. But I'm also a servant. You must be able to know this. When you realize that you are a servant, when you are doing your intercessory ministry, you can do it sincerely. So you can fast and pray for two or three days and not mention anything about yourself because you realize that you are a servant. Are you getting my point now? You are a servant. A servant is a property. That is a dimension you must know about God. Thank God for being one with Christ. But if that's all you know about his image, you are not reflecting him properly. You must get to a point where you know that the same Bible that says we are seated with Christ said we have been bought with a price. Know ye not that your body has become the temple of another. So that, that revelation of a calf brings you to a point where you can lay down your life. You can do anything for the kingdom as far as service is concerned. So your money can go for the kingdom. So you can inconvenience yourself for the kingdom. As a man of God, you go for a meeting and there's no AC there and it's a bike that will drive you, that will, that will, that will ride you to the place and you don't sit there and say, with my status, I'm a king. Come on now. Uh-uh, you're a king but you're a servant. Is that true? And that although you love the Lord, you are not afraid of service. Everybody say, I'm a servant. Say it, I'm a servant. I live to serve the king. Say it, I live to serve his purposes. I live to serve the king. I live to serve his purposes. It's not enough to know that you have dominion. It's not enough to know that you are a king. You must know that you live to serve the purposes of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit on me take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me so whatever inconvenience it may bring to you you are willing to go through it Paul said so then death works in us that life will work in you although you are a king 
although you are royalty if it takes cleaning the house of god you can do it as a millionaire ceo and you know that i am a servant a born servant hallelujah praise the lord celebrate john it's good to see him hallelujah everybody say i'm a servant say it i'm a servant it's not enough to know that you are king you have dominion you must realize that the purposes of the kingdom will only be executed when you become a servant and can i tell you something when you take up the posture of a servant your gift for being a servant is access to light and revelations revelations 1 verse 1 the bible says the revelation of jesus which he showed unto john his servant you must be a servant to access that revelation in joshua chapter 1 god speaking to joshua said moses my servant is dead although moses commanded authority he demonstrated dominion but he died a servant this is a dimension of the image of God that you must reflect. It's not enough to have dominion. It's not enough to know you are one with Christ. You must realize that you are a servant. Everybody say, I'm a servant. Preacher, you are a servant. As a worker in the house of God, you know that you don't just come and carry your status and say, I'm a great man. No, you serve. You serve. Hallelujah. And then, the truth is sometimes as an ox when you serve you get to a point where people can break you down is that true the bible says don't muzzle the ox the ox can be hungry there are some times have you have you seen how certain donkeys get tired and even fall because they stretch them and so he introduces you to the third dimension the face of a man your humanity is also a reflection of the image of the Christ that in as much as you realize that you are you have authority you are invincible and in as much as you have adopted the purposes of the kingdom and you have pledged your life don't forget that that is not all there is to reflecting the fullness of the image of the Christ and the third face was the face of the man notice the progression the face of the man why the face of the man because there are times you must you must permit your humanity to play when you are trying to reflect christ it is not spirituality to hide your humanity so you see jesus revealing his humanity he was hungry jesus was hungry you will not be fasting every day of your life you are a human being jesus was hungry jesus wept jesus was heartbroken so when you find yourself crying someone died and you're crying and someone said come on man up square up no no allow your tears it's not a symbol of weakness there is a dimension of god that permits that operation hallelujah so jesus hears that lazarus his brother is dead and jesus goes to the tomb and the Bible says, and Jesus wept. John 11, the 35th chapter, and Jesus wept. He said, we do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity. The word infirmity is there is the word limitation, not sickness. Limitation. Hallelujah. All through scripture, you see God using imperfect man. As a, as, an, as a system not as a human being man if you describe man as a system man is flawed that's why in the making of the bread he said add a little leaven because leaven stands for imperfection he said add it although it will be used in my temple add it the beautiful thing about God is that he does not wait for you to be perfect before he uses you he can be building you on the go hallelujah see all the people that god used in scripture they were not perfect people from murderers like moses to womanizers and killers like david to temperous people like moses idol worshipers like abraham angry people like elijah emotional people like ezekiel hallelujah 
erratic people like Peter unstable people like Thomas hallelujah yet in the midst of their imperfections his purposes still came to pass this is what makes him mighty the ability to birth his purposes in spite of your limitation everybody say I'm human say I'm human the man that pioneered the Welsh revival the man that pioneered the Welsh revival died not because it was his time he died because he understood that he had dominion and he knew that he was a servant serving the king but he forgot that he was a human being it was said he literally walked himself to death because he believed that if he did not frontier the revival it would be corrupted so based on his fear of the revival being corrupted and then the corruption now attributed to him he took his humanity i mean he forgot about his humanity and he died do you know there are many geos and great men that died before their time because they want to win the whole world they have over 30 or 40 ministrations in a week flying all around and they are tired i used to be like that until the day god gave me this revelation i literally killed myself because i believed that i didn't want to fail god there are times that i would pray for hours i would spend time and then when i'm about to go and rest somebody will now send me a text that's when the person has finished sleeping wipe sleep from his eyes and they will they will say very very attractive things like god sent you to us and you know i'll feel that burden of ministry now uh -huh. when i finish praying if your text come if the one who created the heavens and the earth does not save you i will not kill myself Uza went to help the ark and he died but the ark never fell hallelujah so be careful because some of us are literally killing ourselves you are priding in the fact that you are getting lean you have convinced yourself that it's a sign that you are spiritual that when men see you and your voice is husky your face is oily the, the, your appearance there's nothing to be desired about it you equate it to spirituality not so there is a dimension of your humanity and god rested God rested and the proof of rest is that you cease from your work. You must rest. If you plan to use your body for a long time, you must create a system. I used to say yes to every ministration. Jack of all trade going to win the whole world. And one day the Lord gave me a revelation. He told me to look at a cross and he said, your face is not the one on the crucifix. You didn't die. No, I mean it very seriously. And it dawned on me that I'm only a member of the body, not the body. So the best that I can be is an effective member of the body. There are many men whose families have gone down the drain because they are doing ministry. The children never get to see their father. The husband never gets to spend time with the wife. John Lake. How many of you have heard of John G. Lake? when john g lake's wife was about to die john g lake's daughter said if john lake was around the mother would not die because he was there trying to save the world his wife was dying the daughters wanted their father but he was there becoming a lion and becoming an ox and he forgot that he was a human being and he came back to meet the obituary of his wife Everybody say, I'm human. Say it, I'm human. It's okay to cry. Yes. It's okay to make mistakes. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's all right to make mistakes. Samson allowed his humanity to go to the extreme when he followed a woman called Delilah. So I'm talking about the extremities of humanity because some of you, this part of it has consoled you so much. 
you are saying are you kidding so i'm human so you can just do everything and say i'm human i beg i'm human slept with the lady i'm human i took the beer i'm human samson allowed his humanity to go so far and two things happened to him and it will happen to anybody who allows his humanity to prevail over his spirituality your source of illumination will be taken and your glory will be taken from your life two things the hair of a man the bible talks of a woman's hair being the glory that means man as the bride of christ has his hair representing his glory and the bible says two things she was not interested you would think that delilah would cut off the hands of samson is that not what he uses to beat people he said immediately remove his eyes because if thy eye be single your whole body will be full of light so when you allow excessive humanity there will be no illumination so you don't fast again you don't pray you don't constrain yourself because you feel i'm human the source of illumination will grow dim that's what happened to eli eli began to be so conscious of his old age he allowed his humanity to interrupt his priesthood and the bible says his eye began to become dim and it takes us to the fourth phase the face of the flying eagle so although you are human less you allow your humanity to cross beyond its boundary it reminds you that you are from above the flying eagle that there is a technology in the spirit that is able to remedy for the predicaments of your humanity and then the bible now begins to say i know that even the young men can grow weary the youth and faint i know there is a provision for your humanity it's not backsliding i know there is a time you cannot pray it's, it's natural i know there is a time you may not want to study the word there is a time challenges will overwhelm you but it says there is a technology in the spirit that has been made available to supplement for that predicament it says they that wait upon the lord he said they shall renew their strength and they will mount up with wings not like birds like the eagle that was the eagle there they will mount up with wings like the eagles so when men see your humanity and they see that you are perplexed on all sides everything is happening and it looks like you will never come out all of a sudden you sustain the technology in the spirit we will run and not grow weary We'll walk and we'll not faint For the Lord will go before us And His joy will be our strength Mounting up with wings as eagles As the Spirit says His soul We will come into His presence We'll wait upon the Lord You know the song? We will wait upon the Lord Oh, hallelujah! For in His presence is fullness of joy, and our strength shall be restored as we wait upon the Lord. Yeah, that's the technology in the spirit. So the guy disappoints you, and he said, "I won't marry you again." Oh. I've just been looking for a way to tell you. And although you are a great woman of God, you will see your humanity find an expression. You will cry. And then when you come for koinonia like this, you hear songs like this. And it's a technology in the spirit that begins to mount you up with wings as an eagle. And like Job, you say, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. All the days of my appointed time, I will wait until my change comes. The Bible says, and John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing. Oh, powerful. Can we sing that song? We will wait. We will wait upon the Lord. For in his presence, this fullness of joy and our strength shall be restored. As we wait upon the Lord. Just the voice.
voices alone sing we will wait upon the lord for in his presence is fullness of joy and our strength shall be restored as we wait upon the lord so your rent is overdue. It's okay for your humanity to find expression. Time has gone and marriage doesn't look like it's coming. You are now 36, 37. It's okay to be human. Hallelujah. You've been wearing one trouser for the past five months. It's okay to worry about it. Don't say I don't care. Care. It's okay. Hallelujah. Every guy you smile at is frowning at you. You are a human being. It's okay for your humanity to find expression. You started a church and after three years you are just seven. It will disturb you. No matter how a man of faith you are. It's okay. You trusted God that at this level of your life you will be soaring financially but it looks like it's not so. It's okay. You are human. But remember that you are also a flying eagle. And it's the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Mm. And so they held Samson bound in his hands. And that was a symbol of the apostolic and the prophetic ministry. And not much could be done because the Philistines held these two ministries that represent the foundation of the church. But the Bible says all of a sudden the hand of the Lord came upon him and he was no longer a human being. And the Bible says the rope was like flask. Come live in me all oh my life. Take over. Come live in me and I will rise. All Sing it one more time. Come live in me all my life. Take over. Come breathe in me and I will rise. From glory to glory. That's how you rise. When you allow the anointing of the Spirit to open you up to the dimension where you are a flying eagle. From glory to glory. And now forever be chasing after you. I'll be chasing after you And I'll forever be chasing after you I'll be chasing after you So tonight is an admonition He said I will not be negligent to put you in remembrance of these things Although ye already know them and I established in this present truth. It says, No man that warreth entangles himself with civilian affairs. The Bible says, Meditate on these things. Give yourself only to them that your profiting will appear unto all. We are going to pray. Listen. Listen. There are many teachings that have come that can minister to every area of your life that you desire growth and these messages are all free from finances to your relationship with the holy spirit 
to understanding the kingdom to marriage to success to greatness to faith you can access the resources and stay there stay in the present until something breaks open rise up on your feet and we're going to pray All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you. Oh. Come on, give him praise. The truths you are hearing will make you mighty. All the glory belongs. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you. Oh. Come on, celebrate his majesty. All the glory belongs. points and we're done for the night please help that lady hallelujah praise the lord prayer point number one we're going to pray and say father cause your word to prevail listen 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 until your convictions about the reality of the word transcends that which you see you cannot produce faith i've told you this nonsense that is taught about faith is not the way faith works Faith does not just work by jacking yourself into nonsense. Faith is a derivative of the depth of your conviction about the reality of God and his word. And it's entirely a product of revelation. Lift your voice and say, Lord, strengthen my conviction about spiritual things. Lift your voice and pray. Strengthen my conviction. Strengthen my conviction about the reality of your word, the reality of your power, the reality of the anointing, the reality of your principles, the immutability of your counsel. Let my convictions be strengthened. They that know their God, they that know their God, they that have experienced Him shall be strong, empowered with might, and He said they will do exploits. They that know their God. Oh yes, pray. When your conviction becomes strong, you will do exploits in ministry. You will do exploits on your job. You will do exploits in business. You will do exploits in leadership. You will take the mountains and confront the gates and stamp upon the gates of the enemy. Strengthen my convictions. Where my convictions are shaky, strengthen my conviction. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Listen to me. Listen. The dimension of the glory and the power of God that is released in your life is dependent on the strength of your conviction about spiritual realities hallelujah when you realize it's not enough to know that the spirit of the christ lives in you do you know the implication of what that means it's not enough to know that you are a success do you know the implication strengthen my convictions strengthen my convictions you are going to pray mention the areas of your life where you are not yet convicted where the word of god has not gained ground and say lord help me lift up your voice and pray for some of us is in the area of finance some of us is in the area of marriage some of us is in the area of our strength some of us is in the area of your job lift up your voice and pray strengthen my conviction deepen my roots deepen my roots let me understand the system of the kingdom Strengthen my convictions. 
Shekete bananabash Emprakata ba 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 Are you praying inside and outside? Pray. Shekha ba ba ko soto pokota Rakata ba lekete frente gete bele de bosh Rapokoto subanabash shekete le baka Strengthen my conviction the Bible says, be unshakable, be immovable, be steadfast, be unshakable, be immovable. Hallelujah. 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 Prayer point number two. The Bible says that we have been made objects of praise. Objects of praise. It says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people called forth to show forth. It's the Greek word doxazo. It's a displaying of the excellency of the kingdom of him the perfections of him that has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light you're going to pray and say lord put a seal upon my life that will make me a testimony put a seal stamp my life with your anointing stamp my life with your wisdom come on pray put a seal upon my life that will cause the nations to know that Jehovah reigns in my life. Make me an object of praise. Put a seal. Come on, pray, Koinonia. Put a seal upon my life. Let your hand come upon me. Let your hand come upon me. Let your wisdom come upon me let your excellence come upon me let your glory come upon me stamp it upon my life i am an object of praise Oh yes, yes, let my life be supernatural, everything supernatural, stamp it upon my life. Hallelujah, 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 listen, listen to me, the Bible says, and when Jesus came out of the water, it says the Holy Ghost descended upon him like a dove. There was a stamp and a voice spoke. It didn't speak to men. It spoke to territories. He said, this is my beloved and I instruct you to hear him. In other words, let gates be opened. Let barriers be broken. This has been approved. He said, Paul, an apostle, approved by signs and wonders and miracles. You're going to pray and say, Lord, approve my life. Approve my life. Let there be a demonstration of the reality of spiritual things. Pray. Sheketeka. Sombetalikata. Ebrata Sheketele. Let there be a divine stamp upon my life, upon my ministry, upon my business, upon my job, upon my family that testifies, that testifies, that testifies that Jehovah reigns, that testifies that his kingdom is superior. Hallelujah. We're out of time. 
the last prayer point we are going to pray for our families in preparation listen next week miracle service is going to be an explosion i'm telling you what the lord put in my spirit to share is mighty mighty god will do awesome things in this place we are going to pray and say father right upon my family let there be a testament that the glory of god is upon my family you're not praying for yourself come on believers pray as for me and my house as for me and my house if it does not affect your family then it is not complete Shokoto prokete rekete kete pokoto ba zotele ke pratikata. Right, oh God. Right, oh God. Let there be a testament of your glory, a testament of your beauty, a testament of your power, a testament of your wisdom, a testament of your grace. Pray for your family. Intercede in two minutes. Intercede. I cover for them. I come as an end for her. An end for you of the kingdom. An end for you of the present. A sent one. An ambassador. Let there be light in every area of darkness. I appoint unto them that mourn in my family. I set for them beauty for ashes, joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Pray, prophesy, pray, declare, pray. Job 22 verse 28, and thou shalt decree, thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established. Shekete pokotoba, rekete kete pokosotoba, ebrante le kosto bondoke. Oh, let your glory come, let your glory come upon my family. Let your glory come. Let there be an evidence. Let there be an evidence of the living Christ. Let there be an evidence of the glory of God. Look at me. I'm going to make an altar call. There is a gentleman that sent me a text that he wants to get born again. Now is the time. When I finish talking, you can run and come out. But I want to make an altar call. There are many of us standing here. We are the hope of our families. We are the hope of our territories. If we miss it, the purposes of God may be thwarted for our families. And God needs us to be envoys. There are two categories of people who will run out here. Number one, those who have never given their hearts to the Lord. I don't care if you have been in church all your life. You have never made that commitment to say, Lord, I want to start a journey with you. That you write my name in the book of life and that I receive eternal life. That's the first category. The second category of people are those who have backslidden. And those who have found themselves derailing from the things of God. You were once on fire and you love God. But now you are even surprised seeing the way your life is. There is hope for you. There is hope for you. Hallelujah. And so as I count one to five, we are out of time. I like those two categories of people to come out quickly and stand before the Lord. 
and it will be my privilege to lead you and reconnect you back. I know that there are a number of us outside. I know that there are people standing. It's not compulsory. You can choose to stay. But there are people. The Holy Ghost is speaking to you right now. And he's saying it's time. Come out quickly. One. Celebrate them. I know that there are many people. Don't wait for anybody. You are the first person. Two. Please, if you are coming, hurry up. Hurry up. Three. God bless you. Don't let any devil stop you. Four. I salute every one of us listen for taking the courage to come to Jesus Christ the Bible says as many as will come to him he will in no wise cast away hallelujah this is like a, a factory this is a making process and I want you to mean it don't just come out here and be emotional mean it from the depths of your heart this is between you and Jesus Christ this is birthing a relationship that will make you a sign and a wonder lift up your right hand and from the depth of your heart I want you to say this after me and those of us in the congregation while they are praying I'd like you to join them in prayer pray in tongues for them lift your hands say Lord Jesus I believe in you I believe you died for me you shed your blood for my sins I have heard your word today I make Jesus Lord of my life I accept him as Savior and I declare that I receive eternal life into my spirit from today I'm a child of God my name is in the book of life I receive grace to live in victory I denounce sin I denounce the works of darkness and I receive grace to rise beyond these things from today I'm a child of God the life of God is in me keep your hands lifted and let me pray for you father thank you you have brought these ones by your spirit Holy Spirit I ask in the name of your son Jesus Christ that you will find expression in the lives of these people make them mighty men and women of the spirit plant in them hunger for spiritual things make it impossible for them to go back to their old lives I set you free from all kinds of addictions I set you free from all kinds of demonic things that stand your way to living a victorious life and I declare that there is grace upon you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Congratulations. God bless you for making this great decision. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, I want you to follow the lady waving her hands. That usher waving her hands. The ushers will meet with you. They'll have your details and will get across to you. God bless you. Please follow them. God bless you. Celebrate them, Koinonia. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now let me welcome all the first timers and then we invite Prophet Jangfa to come and just say hi to the house and pray and round up the meeting. Hallelujah. Many of you do not know him. Praise the Lord. If you are worshipping with us for the first time, if this is your first time, I'd like you to jump up on your feet and come out gloriously. We have a blessing and a prophecy for you. Come on, celebrate them, Koinonia. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Please make your way to the front. Make your way to the front. Wherever you are, inside and outside. We love you too much to leave you like that. We have a blessing for you. God bless you. Koinonia, celebrate them. Celebrate them. Celebrate them. God bless you. Celebrate them. Hallelujah.
let's invite prophet jangfa god bless you celebrate him everybody come on now is this how you honor great men hallelujah it's good to be here again praise god amen it's it's good to see the awesome things that the spirit of the lord is doing in this place and i tell you i'm excited to be here tonight amen god bless you my wife and family sends your love to you amen god bless you hallelujah for the first time as please lift up your hands let me pray for you and every one of you just lift up your hands father we thank you for this precious people in the name of jesus we declare the blessings of the lord over you tonight we declare that as you go let the blessings of the lord follow you let the spirit of the almighty god go with you let the glory of the lord mantle you tonight we declare that as you go the earth is subdued before you as you go the earth yield the increase for you we declare that the dew of the heavens follow you we declare that kings shall be your nursing fathers queens shall be your nursing mothers they shall kiss the doors of your feet we declare that you wash your feet with butter let the rock pour you rivers of oil let the hand of the almighty god go with you let the earth yield the increase to you we declare you blessed today let the anointing rest upon you let the glory of the lord go with you in the name of jesus you shall go for the joy be led for the peace the mountains and the hills shall break forth with singing before you the trees of the forest shall clap their hands you are blessed in the name of jesus i activate the glory of god upon you i declare the presence of god go with you the increase of the heavens is upon you the blessings of the sun is upon you the blessings of the sea is upon you you are blessed in the name of jesus you are prosperous in the name of jesus you are blessed the lord bless you and keep you the lord cause his face to shine upon you the lord be gracious to you the lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace and grant you peace i declare nothing is missing in your life nothing is broken in your life the hand of the lord is upon you the sun shall not smite you by day nor the moon by night the arrows of the wicked shall not come near you only with your eyes you will see the reward of the wicked god bless you god bless you god bless you the lord cause the mountains to skip before you let every jordan pass before you let the mountains pour you oil i declare you bless 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 go and prosper go and multiply go and replenish the earth go and have dominion experience miracles experience miracles experience supernatural turn around in your lives in your academics in your families be blessed be blessed be empowered to succeed to prosper to increase the anointing is upon you the glory of god is upon you the miracle power is upon you in the name of jesus god bless you you are blessed as you go the presence of the lord go with you the lord take away every difficulty from your life the lord subdues obstacle before you in the name of jesus i mean the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore surely his goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless 
Check our home page for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.